It is that time of year when the magic of Christmas is swirling about the imaginations of children and some adults, you might say. It is indeed a mysterious time as the days get darker and the nights get longer. What might be lurking? Well, all kinds of things, all manner of entities, spirits, Christmas legends and lore. But what about this Santa Claus? <laughs> Is there any reality behind the alleged visitations in modern times of the jolly red-robed wraith? Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, we will find the truth and attach the snowy nodes of truth. Oh, I just rhymed truth with truth. Anyways, it's going to be a great episode. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Oh, yes. Sorry, I don't have a script. It's the best I could do. But it's Christmas time! <laughs> <laughs> that was my elf. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> All right. Awesome. I wish you guys could see this face, because that's what made it extra funny. It's the only way I could do that elf voice. <laughs> All right. Yes. Oh, man, this is going to be a fun episode. What a fascinating idea for a weird Christmas episode. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. It is Christmas time and I wanted to embrace that spirit, the magic of Christmas. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I want to say, stop what you're doing. If you have a child in the room, please, if you haven't had a conversation with them about the jolly fellow that climbs down the chimney this time of year, <laughs> just want to give you a chance. If you don't need any Santa spoilers, it's too late now. Yeah. Like, no, what I, didn't say anything. I didn't say what the secrets are. These are adult secrets about Santa Claus. I'm not going to say what it is. Just give me a chance to turn down your radio. Pause it till you get home, away from your beautiful kids, because we are going to talk about what I call the Santa Lacrum. Merry Christmas. This, John, I think you're going to be really, really interested in. This is fun. Or maybe not. It's like Krampus? No. So... We are going to maybe discuss a little Christmas lore, some, you know, mysterious, dark Christmas stuff. But I got into a topic that I call the, the Santa Lacrum because what is happening around the country and around the world, a bizarre number of people are seeing Santa Claus. Ho, ho. Hmm. They're seeing the sleigh. There's something pretending to be. That's the key. Something that's not quite a simulacra, a Santa Lacrum, if you will. Something that's slightly off, but resembles Santa Claus. And it's so strange because adults will see this and it will stun them. They'll be confused. Because how do you process that in your mind, this thing that isn't real, right? We talked about this with the imposter entities and the Muppets and that kind of stuff. Children's cartoons coming to life in their bedrooms. Taking advantage of the reputation of a jolly character to do some darkness. Yeah, so when you're getting these stories of people witnessing this thing as adults, as children, some of it may be fallible memory as children, but when adults witness it, uh, there's just something strange that we're going to get into, something going on. And I'm going to develop this theory called the Santa Lacrum, uh, the Simulacra Santa. What if it is the case? We talked about tulpas before, right? Like tulpamancers and that kind of thing. Tibetan Book of the Dead talks about tulpas, and you can conjure something. If you have enough belief in it, you can create or conjure a being, if you will. Well, think about that idea and consider the fact that on Christmas, it's the one time of year where... The entire country, at least in the United States, and it's celebrated different places, different ways, but the idea of Santa, the belief in Santa among those of us with the most powerful imaginations, if you will. Children. The most untainted, unsquashed imaginations. Yes, children. They're all at the same time focused on this entity, this character that doesn't exist. So what if the Earth is this map of belief and imagination in Santa Claus, conjured or, or fed by these children, and then each house where there is this belief is a little node on that map of belief. And the power in those nodes and places could allow, let's say, let's say it's not a tulpa, let's say it's not something that's being imagined and created, but instead it's the potential for something to use that belief and manipulate it. Let's call it a Santa suit, if you will, that may be something just beyond our realm, on the dark side, whereas we are on the light a dimension right outside of ours that can tap into that focused belief energy to manifest, but singularly manifest in the form that they are expecting, which is the Santa Claus. And so you start getting these weird, offbeat visions, appearances of something in their room that maybe is scuttling under the tree or is eight foot large and kind of deformed, but has, you know, a white beard and a hungry mouth. Who knows? 
creepy concept. But anyways, there's a lot of weird stories. So we're going to get into that. There, there's some really creepy stories. It sounds pretty fun. Yeah. I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. Join us. Join us in the expansion for a special holiday episode. It's going to be a great time. Bye. Yeah. So uh, enjoy this clip. And then after the break, we'll be back with more strange listener stories, secrets under Antarctica and creatures under the bed. We'll be back. Access granted. Jean Hingley had waved goodbye to her husband Bye, while he went off to work in a bitter cold morning when he saw a light in the garden. Thinking he had left the carport lit, she went to investigate. But it was dark, so she returned to the kitchen. It's cold out there. She put down some food for her hobo, the family Alsatian, and called him from the garden. Hi. But he flopped down as if drugged and gazed at the ceiling, glassy-eyed. Mm, what's wrong, bud? Then, with a <laughs> noise, Whoa, what? three weird creatures flew past into the lounge. They were only three and a half feet tall and had waxy white faces and coal black eyes with no eyebrows and very thin mouths. They wore silvery clothes with a transparent bubble-type helmet over their heads. Oh, there are the helmets again. Mm-hmm. Helmet elves. These humanoids also had transparent, quote, wings and floated. Jean was clinging to the sink, paralyzed. But then, she says, she suddenly floated towards the lounge. Oh. Jean noticed that the aliens were inspecting the ornaments on the Christmas tree with interest. They also probed into her mind with telepathy. Quote, it was like a light or an x-ray penetrating. They told her she would not be harmed, and when she asked where they were from, they said, or rather, she could not tell which one said, We come from the sky. Then she explained why the house was all dressed up to celebrate Jesus' birthday. Quote, We know all about Jesus, they claimed. They said they would return, and quote, We come down here to talk to people, but they don't seem to be interested. Finally, this is a bizarre story. Finally, when we showed them how to light a cigarette, what? <laughs> they fled as if in terror, <laughs> taking a mince pie each with them. <laughs> 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 taking a mince pie each with them. <laughs> Outside on her garden was an egg-shaped object with windows. They floated into it, and it took off emitting a bluish flash and pulsating twice before disappearing with a flash. The dog returned to normal, and Jean called the police. The electric clock in the house had stopped, and all her cassette tapes were magnetized and unplayable. In the snow where the object had sat was an oval outline, which the local UFO group was able to photograph before the snow melted. 